Have you ever felt drained trying to be nice to everyone? It's like running on a treadmill set at a pace you can't maintain, isn't it? You're constantly trying to keep up, but eventually, you're left feeling exhausted, and more often than not, dissatisfied. This is a common phenomenon, something many of us grapple with on a daily basis. It's this ingrained desire to please everyone around us, to make everyone happy, to avoid conflict and keep the peace. It's a noble intention, sure, but it's also an impossible task. And this is where we stumble upon what's known as the pleaser's paradox. The pleaser's paradox, quite simply, is a concept that the more you try to please everyone, the less happy you actually become. Let's consider why that might be. First and foremost, when you're constantly striving to meet others' expectations, you're setting aside your own needs and desires. You're prioritizing others over yourself. And while it's important to consider the feelings and needs of those around us, constantly putting others first can lead to feelings of resentment and burnout. Secondly, this constant desire to please can result in a loss of authenticity. In the bid to keep everyone happy, you may find yourself suppressing your own thoughts and feelings. Over time, you might even start to lose sight of who you are and what you truly want. Lastly, the pleaser's paradox brings to the forefront a harsh reality. You can't make everyone happy, it's an impossible task, simply because everyone is different, with unique needs, desires, and expectations. Trying to meet all these diverse expectations is like trying to hit a moving target. It's frustratingly elusive. So why do we find ourselves stuck in this pleaser's paradox? Well, that's a question we'll delve into as we proceed. But for now, let's remember, it's okay to prioritize your own needs, it's okay to be authentic, and it's okay to accept that you can't please everyone. Believe it or not, there's a whole lot of psychology behind this need to please. It's intriguing, isn't it? Why do we often bend over backwards, stretching ourselves thin to make others happy? Well, let's dive into the fascinating world of our minds to find out. The desire to please others is deeply rooted in our psychology, often tied to our self-esteem. When we please others, we feel a sense of accomplishment, a boost in our self-worth. Our brains reward us with a rush of feel-good chemicals like dopamine and oxytocin. It's like a pat on the back that says, hey, you did good. But there's more to it. The fear of rejection is a powerful motivator. We're social creatures, wired for connection. The idea of being shunned or disliked is a scary prospect for most of us. So we try to please, to fit in, to be accepted. It's a survival instinct, a relic of our tribal past when being cast out meant certain doom. And then there's the desire for approval. We crave validation, the nod of acceptance that says we're on the right track. It's not just about avoiding rejection, but actively seeking affirmation. We want to be liked, to be admired, to be seen. This desire can be so strong that it drives us to go out of our way to please others, even at our own expense. Interestingly, much of this behavior is often rooted in our childhood experiences. If we grew up in an environment where love and attention were conditional, where we were rewarded for pleasing others and punished for asserting ourselves, we might carry this pattern into adulthood. It becomes a learned behavior, a coping mechanism to navigate our relationships. So, you see, the need to please is more than just being nice. It's a complex interplay of self-esteem, fear of rejection, desire for approval, and our past experiences. But what happens when we try to please everyone? The truth is, it's impossible to please everyone, and here's why. You see, we live in a world that brims with diversity, a world where every individual has a unique blend of preferences, expectations, and values. Imagine you're a chef at a bustling restaurant. One customer might relish your spicy dishes, while another might prefer them mild. One might adore your creative fusion cuisine, while another might crave the comfort of traditional recipes. You simply can't cook a single dish that delights every palate. Likewise, in life, you can't craft a personality, a lifestyle, or a set of decisions that pleases every single person you meet. People's preferences are as varied as their faces. What one person finds admirable, another might find irksome. What one person finds entertaining, another might find tedious. That's the beauty and the challenge of human diversity. This brings us to the concept of subjectivity. Subjectivity means that our perceptions and judgments are influenced by our personal feelings and opinions. We don't all see the world through the same lens. Our backgrounds, experiences, beliefs, and biases color our judgments. Take, for instance, the simple act of giving a gift. To one person, a handmade present might represent thoughtfulness and effort. To another, it might seem cheap or lacking in effort. The same action, the same intent, yet two completely different reactions, that's subjectivity in action.
But here's the crux of the matter. Trying to please everyone isn't just a futile endeavor, it's a potentially harmful one. When you contort yourself to fit into everyone else's boxes, you risk losing your authentic self, you risk diminishing your own happiness and well-being. So remember, it's not about being liked by everyone, it's about being respected, loved and valued by the right people. Those who appreciate you for who you truly are and not just for who they want you to be. And more than just being impossible, trying to please everyone can be downright harmful. So, what happens when you try to be everyone's favorite person? Well, it's like juggling with flaming torches. It might look impressive for a while, but eventually you're going to get burned. The constant effort of trying to satisfy everyone can take a serious toll on your mental health. It's an exhausting, never-ending cycle that can lead you down a path of stress, burnout, and even depression. Imagine always being on high alert, constantly monitoring others' reactions, adjusting your behavior to avoid disapproval. It's like living in a state of hypervigilance, and it's profoundly draining. Your mind becomes a spinning wheel of thoughts, constantly questioning, did I say the right thing? Did they like me? What if I upset them? This constant self-questioning can lead to anxiety, a feeling of being overwhelmed and, in extreme cases, even panic attacks. Moreover, the constant people-pleasing can lead to resentment. After all, when you're always bending over backward to make others happy, it's easy to start feeling taken for granted. You might begin to wonder why you're the only one making sacrifices and why others aren't making the same efforts for you. This feeling of resentment can cause strain in your relationships and lead to feelings of anger and bitterness. And finally, there's the issue of authenticity. When you're always putting others' needs and wants before your own, you're not being true to yourself, you're wearing a mask, playing a role, and that can make you feel disconnected from who you really are. When you're not authentic, you're not living your life, you're living a performance, and that's no way to live at all. All these effects of people-pleasing paint a grim picture, but it's essential to understand the cost, to realize that being everyone's favorite person isn't just impossible, it's harmful. So what can we do about it? Well, stay tuned because that's exactly what we're going to discuss in our next scene. See you there. The good news is, there's a way to break free from the pleaser's paradox. Picture this, a life where you're not constantly drained, trying to meet everyone's expectations. Sounds liberating, doesn't it? That's because it is. It's time to step out of the pleaser's shoes and into a pair that fits you better. Firstly, stop treating yourself like an afterthought. Self-care isn't selfish, it's essential. Imagine you're a car. You wouldn't drive for miles without refueling, would you? Treat yourself with the same consideration. Take time to rest, rejuvenate, and recharge. It's not just about bubble baths and face masks, it's about giving yourself what you need to thrive. Next, let's talk boundaries. They're not walls, they're fences. They allow the good in while keeping the unnecessary out. Learn to say no when you need to. Remember, every time you say yes to something you don't want to do, you're saying no to something you love. So set those fences and guard them fiercely then start prioritizing your own needs. It's not about disregarding others, it's about not disregarding yourself. Give yourself permission to put your needs first, to pursue your passions, to make decisions that align with your values. You're not just a supporting character in someone else's story, you're the protagonist of your own. Lastly, value your happiness as much as you value others. You deserve to be happy, not just to make others happy. So let your joy be the compass that guides your decisions. The world doesn't need more people bending over backwards to please everyone else. It needs more people who are authentically, unapologetically themselves. Remember you can't pour from an empty cup. Take care of yourself first.